I'm Carmi Weininger, and we're going to talk about fitting the short-backed horse. I have here Cowboy, a Hofflinger, and he's agreed to be our model while we talk about what happens when you don't have a lot of real estate. So the first thing we need to do is find the back edge of his weight-bearing surface. Um, we talk about this in our video about real estate or area available to saddle. We find the last rib of the horse, come forward to, and follow the curve of that rib up to the top of the back. This would be the plane beyond which Cowboy isn't really capable of bearing our weight. So our job in fitting is to get our rider's body weight from this point forward. However, we can have panel that extends beyond this line so long as the panel edge is not weight bearing. Let's see what that looks like. Hello, cowboy. Here's your saddle. Let's see where it sits. So it's very clear that cowboy's ability to carry weight ends before the end of the saddle. However, what we're evaluating is the position of the disc relative to this line. With a reactor panel saddle, it's easy to move the disc forward so that we podium the rider's weight bearing surface and fit the short backed horse um, with lots of freedom. So the panel that sits out behind the disc is not weight bearing, it is an optical illusion and it makes us look like the saddle's too long for the horse's back, but it really functionally is not. So where can this disc go? It can go forward so long as it doesn't go underneath the rider's sitting bones and that doesn't mean the back end of the rider's bum, but it means more the place where the rider's seat bones sit on the saddle, typically about here on this line. So my pointing finger shows you the front edge of the disc and we can move this disc forward all the way up to the back edge of the saddle flap and that means that we'll be able to take the disc representing the weight bearing surface, moving it forward of this line and keeping our weight where Cowboy is perfectly capable of carrying it. 